Throughout the past few centuries, noble men and women have staunchly advocated for the reformation in our society to achieve equal treatment for all individuals, regardless of gender, creed or disposition. If they were Commonwealth public servants, they would be paid less than male models and would have to resign when they married. At the centre of this movement is the idea of liberty and tolerance. Over the past few decades, multiculturalism has taken root in the West. With it, an eclectic group of people with a variety of opinions on how to live a virtuous and successful life. Not every culture has partisan agreement on what is virtuous or permissible. So could multiculturalism just be a counterproductive endeavour? Or are these cultural clashes so scarce as to be considered inconsequential? One of the core concepts of Western values is the idea of individual liberty. In short, an individual can do as they like as long as they don't affect the freedoms and safety of other individuals. This is one of the main reasons why we can have a country with multiple cultures but still live relatively harmoniously. The growing political polarisation has created two large groups of fervent contrarians. Arguments about a nuanced approach to discourse on a topic like multiculturalism are being drowned out by far-right and far-left political opponents, constantly spotlighting any global story that backs their narrative. While the vast majority of cultures are compatible with our values, not all aspects are. This map shows the global opinions concerning views on gay relationships worldwide. A good analogue of how this maps onto modern multicultural Australia is the statistics from the recent same-sex marriage plebiscite. In this voluntary nationwide postal survey, every state predominantly voted yes to legalise same-sex marriage. The fascinating insight was that New South Wales had the closest margin, despite having four of the six highest yes vote electorates and the largest gay community. Looking further into the data, the highest proportion of no votes correlates with citizens originating from highly religious conservative countries. Though such a connection is hardly surprising, it is important to acknowledge that some cultures have certain puritanical ideas antithetical to liberal democracy and therefore certain aspects of multiculturalism can have counterproductive outcomes. Though the trend of religiously conservative immigrants is far from atypical, it is important that individuals with illiberal cultural norms do not go unchallenged in civil discourse. The standard of tolerance shouldn't be lowered. Upholding with the ideals of liberal democracy, we must only refute ideas and not people themselves. To judge someone different from Iraq than we would from New Zealand, purely based on the country of origin, is a definition of prejudice. All countries have a heterogeneous collection of ideas. More prejudice that a particular individual has to endure, the further they'll drift from mutual civility. Constant waves of immigration over the past several decades has helped Australia become an economic powerhouse becoming a magnet for a wide variety of people seeking a better life. It is important though that our cultural standards of tolerance, freedom and rule of law do not become superseded by another culture's contrary ideas on the matter. Retrograde views must not once again become permissible. We can have cultural diversity within a shared sense of national identity. Defending these liberal ideas shouldn't become a conservative position. I'll leave you with this short clip from political talk show host Majid Nawaz, who summarises my sentiments on this video quite succinctly. An ideal, when the burden of proof is met and all the Sharia conditions are complied with in an ideal Islamic state, do you endorse the stoning of adulterers to death? Yes, but I, in principle, however, I don't believe that it would ever happen because the burden of proof is so high. Mm -hmm. I well, I tell you what, Aisha, I tell you what, I thank you for, um, for, for continuing this conversation because you've just demonstrated precisely why you and people like you who sympathize with your kinds of ideas can never be part of the solution. That's worse, Aisha, than the BNP. The BNP don't believe in murdering people for mistakes or choices they make in their personal lives. Uh, sometimes they're not even mistakes like so-called apostasy laws and blasphemy laws and punishing people for leaving the religion. That's free choice. People like you will never be part of the solution until you abandon those ideas. I will continue talking to you. You're not my enemy. 
but you're certainly not part of the solution because the ideas and the values you believe in are worse than Tommy Robinson's. They're worse than the EDL. Uh, they're definitely worse uh, than anyone who claims to be populist right Trump. They're worse than the BNP because these guys don't go around advocating by law murdering people for personal choices. They may have unpalatable ideas, but you idealize murdering people uh, for making personal individual choices that have happened not to agree with your definition of God's law.